Angel in Ireland uh, about feminism and biology. Angel, what is on your mind today? Hi. Um, sorry, can you guys just give me two minutes? I just need to go into another room if that's okay. Um, yeah, let yes, me... but that's because I've... Oh, you were going to read the description that she provided? And then I was going to say, <laughs> quick, in before Forrest hits with the science. This is what I think. Um, but if you wanted to read the description, so there was some context in my... <laughs> Absurd. We are all over the place. Uh, no, I'll tell oh, you what. Yeah. Uh, uh, give yeah, me your so speech. Uh, the, so uh, let's set up this well, topic so for Angel. The, the description that we were given by the call screener uh, was feminism and biology is patriarchy natural. Um, and I would say that uh, the existence of bonobo societies that are matriarchal would demonstrate that while there are examples of patriarchal or something like it, uh, uh, societies uh, amongst primates, there's also examples of matriarchal ones. Additionally, those are things that formed in a previous to the mastery of electricity and technology world before we started artificially creating our own concrete jungles when we lived in actual jungles and actual plains. And so I would say, yes, kind of, but so is cancer. Uh, be something being natural doesn't make it good or necessary. But uh, I have a co-host that's got way more insider knowledge on biology and primate societies, uh, despite the textbooks that are on my bookshelf. So I throw it to either uh, Angel, our caller, if she's ready, or to Forrest. Yeah, like Angel, why don't you on. walk Let's us through your, your question, your thought here? Okay. Well, first one, I just want to say that I'm a huge fan of you guys, specifically Forrest. He's been such like a huge part in my deconstruction journey. So well, thank you. you, Boris. Your videos are absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you so much. It really means a lot I, to me. <laughs> of course. So um, one of the things, the hardest things to deconstruct is misogyny. And mm. um, like, obviously there is like religious misogyny, you know, um, Adam and Eve and all that stuff. But there's yep. also misogyny that's in within like science. So like I went on a date recently. It was terrible. <laughs> And the guy was basically saying that patriarchy is natural. You can see uh, it throughout human history. Uh, you can see it within the the, uh, the animal kingdom. He was no. talking about... Uh, this is first date about, material? Like, <laughs> open and, class date too? And he was yeah. talking about like alpha males and all that. Uh, did he call himself stronger, alpha? Smarter. Point. It's not a coincidence that the greatest leaders in the animal kingdom and in human history are men. And did, I did he stop did he stop listening to Andrew Tate while you were talking to hear you or was he doing it the whole time? Was it <laughs> Yeah, and um not even that, but also like I have like my younger cousins who are on social media and they're hearing all this young stuff that misogyny is built into men. It is their biological mm. instinct. Mm. And from, an bio, from a, bio, a biologist perspective, what is your thoughts on this? And what are some rebuttals that I can use to oppose this? That's my whole thing. Yeah, so I think Jamie actually started perfectly, is the fact that like we are primates, and there's lots of different kinds of primates. And some of them, like gorillas, for example, and, and chimpanzees, do have a pretty patriarchal society where you have like the big, strong uh, uh, males leading the way. Um, but there's also other primates that aren't that way. Uh, for example, lemurs. Lemurs are all matriarchal. You have the 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 the, the female running the group. Um, uh, bonobos are another great example, which are, are predominantly matriarchal, um, overwhelmingly bisexual, just interesting apes. Um, and so you have a lot of examples of that, but that brings with it the baggage of saying, okay, well, if different types of primates have different societies, which one do humans have? We can't say, well, lemurs do it that way, so we should too. What, what are we looking like? And it just so happens that in pretty much every goddamn way of, of, of dimorphism and of, of you know, uh, either behavioral or, or phenotypic uh, 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 dimorphism, we land kind of right in the middle of, of what everybody else is in terms of the primates. Um, and we also see that even in species-specific groups, there's still an air of culture that's really meaningful. So there's this uh, neuroendocrinologist out of Stanford University uh, named Robert Sapolsky. So he's very famous because he's super freaking cool. Um, and Robert Sapolsky, one of his most famous 
things that he talks about, an experiment that he was doing, or really not an experiment, an observation that he had, is he was in Kenya studying all of baboons. Um, and you have this troop of baboons that's just like the most basic standard off the shelf baboons, um, where you have the big, strong alpha quote quote males which that's a bullshit term but we'll get to that later um these big strong males that are uh, dominating everybody and then you have all the females and all the weaker males that are being beat up and picked on all the time um and then one day there's a like tourist restaurant that has a bunch of meat that's infected with tuberculosis and they throw out all this old meat that they can't use anymore. And the baboons get into it. Um, and of course, the big, strong, you know, macho baboon males at the top are the first ones to eat and they eat the most. And overnight, 50% of this troop dies. Um, and all, almost all of the deaths are among these big, strong alpha males. Um, and so you'd expect that in this situation that the next males in line would become the big bullies and would start beating up on everybody. Um, but in turn, it, it, it turns out they don't at all. They continue doing exactly what they've been doing, which is grooming each other, which is a big uh, social capital in, in, in this you know uh, primate society in general, but you know, with these baboons especially. Um, they're grooming each other. They're nice to each other. They're, they're, the cortisol stress hormone levels go down in the whole group as a whole. Um, Nobody becomes the big angry evil male anymore. And when other baboons come in trying that, they all shut it down and they're like, we don't do that here. That's not us. And it takes the entire population of that troop turning over, dying off and a new generation coming in before they start going back to their quote, quote, natural instincts. If baboons can figure it out, humans fucking can too. We can figure out how to overcome it that what instinct says and do what's actually best for everybody. Um, none of that says anything to whether or not there's any actual instinct in human males to be domineering or patriarchal or, 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 you know, bombastic or predatory or any of these other ridiculous things that people try to come up with. There fucking isn't as far as I know. Um, but even if there were, that's not an excuse. If we're a species that can put robots on Mars, we're a species that can learn to keep it in our pants and keep our hands to ourselves. That's my opinion on it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, the, it, it, all that is to say, not only is there no evidence for what this person is saying, but also it's a craptacular argument on a good day. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I heard, I heard this like over and over again and yeah. it's just like a prevalent talking point on like yeah. social media. It makes for a nice and soundbite. It, it's yeah, really, it, it, it's yeah. really simple. It's really straightforward. Uh, you can disseminate these ideas very, very quickly, and it actually takes a lot of know-how to be able to slowly debunk them. So, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. I think we're going to see these notions continue to spread. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out that they're just not well grounded factually. I mean, they're really e not. Yeah. yeah. Even if we sort of allow for a lot of the different pieces of bullshit that just came up, it's worth acknowledging that even in like strongly patriarchal species, patriarchal doesn't necessarily mean might makes right. You know, right, the right. alpha male is not necessarily the biggest, strongest, chest thumpiness person there. It's likely the male who has the best relationship with the alpha female. It's likely the male who has the greatest political mind and the most sophisticated understanding of all of the different uh, favor giving and all the different relationships and all these different connections. There's so much intricacy to animal behavior to the human animal behavior and this notion that well because naturally blah 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 violence it is just ridiculous on its face it, it also yeah i know i rambled for a long time but if i can add just a couple more quick things because you like you bring up some great points there is that number one the whole alpha male thing comes from a bullshit debunked study on wolves from like the i think it was like the 1970s or something i, I can't mm. remember but it was the it's not a real concept in like lots of species. Everybody thinks it has to do with wolves. It doesn't. And then they try to do the thing that I was talking about earlier where they're like, well, wolves do it this way. So humans do too. And what it ends up being is the same kind of nonsense thinking that gives rise to things like social Darwinism and stuff where they're like, here's this very rudimentary concept in biology. If I apply that to culture, that means that I get to beat my wife, you know, and, and, and they just want to go with that. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, 
And then also, I want to point out the fact that, you know, anthropology as a study, that, and not just people think of anthropology as just studying like grass stir- skirts and dances and stuff. There's different fields of anthropology, biological anthropology, the study of the human animal, our evolution, our behavior, our biology today. Um, like that's that field was started by literally Victorian men with literally Victorian ideals. Um, and because of that, there was a long dark history of of these scientists across biology, but especially in bioanthropology, glossing over facts that they didn't like, literally destroying evidence that went against their Eurocentric white national, uh, uh, white supremacist, Christian, uh, uh, heteronormative, cisgendered worldview. Um, they would destroy evidence that went against it. They would destroy people that went against it. Um, they would go out into communities and be like, you, man, how do you run this village? And the man would be like, actually, she runs the village. And he'd be like, don't be stupid. How do you run the village? And like that, that's something that happened quite a bit in the same way that, that you know, Europeans genocided their way across the, the globe and destroyed whole cultures. Scientists destroyed a lot of evidence that, of those cultures as well. And we are now going back and re, like, re-looking at a lot of things and finding out that there isn't a lot of evidence for a lot of the assumptions that we made. Um, and you can see the, the, the roots of that rot when you read the comment sections on popular science magazines to talk about it. You know, uh, uh, popular Mechanics, I think just a little while ago, posted an article talking about the growing evidence from, from you know, of what we call feminist archeology, span which is an upsettingly recent dis- uh, topic. Um, where we're showing that actually not all of the hunters were men and all of the gatherers were women. There was actually a tremendous amount of crossover there. And that, you know, the women weren't just at home weaving baskets. They were actually out there working and hunting. And you look at the comment section on those things. I know this because I just happened to see one the other day. And they're like, oh, you're telling me all these people are just out there fighting mammoths while pregnant? Because every woman is pregnant all the time because that's all they think women are for. Um, And like it's yeah, there's just there's so much mounting evidence against this idea. And when we look at the evidence for it that we've been espousing for the past couple of decades, it it, for a couple of centuries, really, uh, it's it's thin if it's there at all. Um, So, yeah. Uh, in terms of biology across the animal kingdom and in terms of just humans, there's really no reason to say that patriarchal societies, um, predatory, domineering, aggressive, might makes right type shit uh, has any naturalistic roots. It's just what's been overwhelmingly successful because it's so incredibly violent and that doesn't make it acceptable or something that we should be looking towards the future with that, that, you don't get something new by trying the same thing over and over. And if you want a better world, maybe we shouldn't be doing the same crap that got us here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Adapt and and change to changing circumstances, particularly when we change them, uh, our species changes them as much as they are. Um, Forrest has given you a pretty good background on the biology, just in terms of... Sorry for talking so long. Oh, no, no, no. Every, Every word worth it. But in terms of the argument, this is one of those really pernicious arguments that we're going to be with for a long, long, long time because it contains all of the things that make it difficult to respond to. It contains a broad generalization, oh, men do this. Well, you can find basically any behavior and say, men do this. Men wear dresses. Men wear pants. Men don't wear dresses. In a certain sense, in the sense that they're using that phrase, all of those statements are true because the term men is so loose and poorly defined. It's like, oh, let me think broadly about this category, this heuristic that's been in our brain since we didn't really have frontal lobes in broad categories of people. And so a statement like, well, men really annoy me or men are smelly or I wish that men had greater muscles and wore shirts less often can all be true statements. Right. And in fact, for me, they often are. But it doesn't make any sense for the sort of assumptions that follow that on uh, in popular conversations, whether it's over a beer or on Twitter to then say, oh, well, it's natural. It's a part of men's instinct. Therefore, our society should respond to it. If I'm going to be in favor or opposed to some policy or some shift in society, I need something other than barstool wisdom to persuade me that any individual specific policy is a good idea or not. And it just sort of sounds like the same uh, 
kind of complaining generalization that you would hear from someone that would say, well, kids these days, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing the other. Men these days are not like men used to be. Well, yes, there's new trends in society. There's new things that happen. And again, we don't really depend on hunting and gathering the way that we did. Less than 1% of the population in my country are farmers. And to be clear, that's the sort of one job that defines when civilization begins, when you control the food. There's a lot of people that are men, that are manly men, that work on Wall Street and that couldn't cook for themselves even if they tried. So the idea of what makes a man a man, or, or whatever it is that they're getting at, or what behavior should be acceptable when we're talking about men is something that's an issue for social concern, but it doesn't even, to me, rise to the level of a scientific claim. And that's a very, very, very difficult thing to point out, especially if you can only use 280 characters. So, in forums where there isn't really the basis for a good, in-depth, specific argument, like Twitter, like social media, where it's not people looking each other in the face and trying to understand each other, we're going to get arguments like this for a long time. So I'd say you know, uh, batten down the hatches and strap in because you're going to be given various responses like the ones we've heard today and like the ones that you've said for a long time. And I salute you for it. It's part of the reason I don't spend as much time on Twitter as I used to. Smart move. Yeah, good thinking. Uh, Angel, we have hit you with just a lot of information yep. there. How is all of this sort of settling in for you? How does all that feel? Um, well, it feels amazing. I have learned a lot. But um, the only question I have left is how does like testosterone actually work? Because they use that word a lot and they associate it with like masculinity. Yeah, the more testosterone, the more manly of a man you are for men to be manly. Right. But how, like how does it actually work and like what's the misconception? Can you guys explain that to me if you don't mind? Yeah, I mean yeah. It, uh, it reduces your, uh, it, actually I'm going to let you jump into all this for us. I'm sorry, I was getting some notes from the uh, crew. No, I, I, I bet you're about to say the same thing that I am, is because it sounded like you were. It reduces the threshold for aggression is, is what is often said. Um, and so like I, I, I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm going to give you a very layman's summary of this. Testosterone is uh, important for a couple of things. One is for, for phenotypic virilization, which is uh, what you would call um, producing a male phenotype, male anatomy. Um, and this is really important when we talk about, you know, especially in biomedical science, especially when we're talking about anatomy, especially when we're talking about um, uh, uh, human populations, you'll often hear distinctions where we say, phenotypically male versus anatomically male versus genetically male versus this male that way it's there's distinctions here so when we talk about testosterone um this is a hormone that causes virilization is, is male development but it also is constantly functional in your brain um and the common misconception is that it makes you violent and angry and all these different things and what it actually appears to be, from my understanding of it, again, not an endocrinologist, this is just what I got out of my you know, labs in this, is uh, that it, it, it just reduces the threshold for those kind of behaviors in some ways. Um, and it does a lot of other stuff too. Uh, pretty much all of endocrinology and pretty much, all, which is the study of, of you know, hormones and, and, and cell signaling, things like this. Um, and then pretty much all of neuroscience as well. Anytime you ever hear somebody say this one thing does this one thing, they are absolutely leaving out just mountains of stuff. Like if you say the, the amygdala in the brain controls fear and aggression. Well, there's like 80 other freaking things that it does <laughs> that are all very nuanced and important. And it's the same thing with testosterone. So anybody who uses testosterone as an excuse to be an asshole uh, is, is doing thinking wrong. Um, it does a lot of really cool stuff. And I've got a really cool clip. I'm actually going to try to pull it up here. Of I talked about Robert Sapolsky a little while ago. I've got a clip of him on, I think, the Huberman podcast talking specifically about testosterone and how misunderstood it is. I'm going to try to find that. And if I can find it, I'll put it down here in the chat. Yeah, I, w I will say just touching on one phrase that he said is anyone that's using, and then he said testosterone, as an excuse to be an asshole, you can pretty much put any word in there. Anyone that's using insert any word or phrase or ideology as an excuse to be an asshole is missing something for me, which is the part where you shouldn't be an asshole. 
<laughs> Additionally, I think it is actually in some ways a sign of positive progress in our society that this is the argument we're hearing. Because the people that come to the conclusion, no, men are like this, men are tough, men have the biggest muscles, men should be in charge of things because they're stronger, etc., have been that viewpoint has been around for quite some time. It's always been wrong, but it's been around for quite some time. And now our society has progressed enough, has become slightly more scientifically literate, that now they have to actually borrow words from biology to continue being wrong about how some humans work. Some effort to justify yeah, some it. Some effort yeah. to justify it. It's uh, uh, based on, oh, I heard a word. Oh, that word is associated loosely with some things that I think of as macho. Therefore, I'll just talk about testosterone, testosterone, testosterone. And it is the same sort of misunderstanding that's led people to tell me, oh, no, don't eat that. It's giving you too much estrogen. You're going to grow tits and become a woman or something. Which, um, if it was that easy to swap your gender, then Seriously. I also don't understand why those people are so objectionable about people swapping their gender. If all I had to do was eat soy and then I was suddenly a woman and every trans person uh, just ate soy or ate, I don't know, whatever it is, super macho Alex Jones sold me this man pills or whatever, then could you really object to such a simple process? It, it, it's complicated. They've got both estrogen and adrenaline and testosterone and a thousand other things going on in their system right now, and so do you. But they've found this shorthand with a science word to make the same arguments that have been foolish for the last hundred years. So really, Angel, I think it comes down to filtering out your dates based on their media diet. You know, I, I hate to go there, but I mean, that, that's a little bit of it. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that all of this has been helpful. I know we've been uh, covering a lot of different inf bits of information. And I just posted oh into the God. chat a, a YouTube short and a 90-minute podcast I was talking about. Both are from that guy that I was mentioning, where he has a very brief definition of testosterone and the way that it changes aggression thresholds and a more detailed, thorough explanation of all the different ways that things like estrogen and testosterone work in the brain and in behavior and things like that and why they're important for ways that we don't take into account. So those are both in the chat now. You can go check those out if you want. All the ways we know about so far. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, Angel, I'll give you the last word here. I really appreciate your patience with us as we all kind of geek out about a topic that I, <laughs> I think we're all, like, very excited about. Yeah. We just love that test. Okay, well, thank you so much. I've actually learned so much. And, um, yeah, I think I've just learned so much. And it's such an honor to get so many words from wisdom, and especially backed up with scientific evidence as well. So thank you so much. I'm glad.